happy, cheerful, loving, charitable. These are all the words everyone would use to describe June. A loving individual who would try to solve any problem she comes across. But not everyone can love this type of person. In fact, some people can despise this kind of person. Not everyone is perfect, and June definitely had her flaws that she didn't hide, but that didn't stop her from caring. Pushing the hateful words to the side, she held her head high for so long, but there's only so much one person can cope with before they break. Unable to cope with the years of abuse from her high school bullies, feeling lost, hurt, broken, unable to keep that bright smile of hers on her face, she took her life at the age of 16. The small town she lived in was devastated, it was as if she was an idol in their eyes, so naturally they became hateful to the ones who drove her over the edge. The ones who bullied her throughout her life and tore down all her confidence and hope she held. Kelly Jackson, Mia James, Lucy Mitchell and Lucas White. The four who were blamed for the death of June were treated as outcasts throughout their small community. No one approached them, no one dared to look at them in the eye. No one could. Their actions are what caused the girl everyone loved to perish. It was all Cody's fault. He targeted them, victimised her, and his little friends followed. Or so, that's how the story was told. What if I told you Cody wasn't the one who brought June to her end? What if someone else was the mastermind behind us? Well, of course, no one believed him. Why would they? He was known for his troublemaker tendencies, his rebellious attitude in school, and the pranks he would play on his teachers when he was a kid. Why would they believe such an untrustworthy person? A year after June's death, he started seeing this strange girl around town. Believing it was just a fragment of his imagination, he pushed the thought aside, when she continuously appeared. Across the street, outside his window, in his nightmares. What else was he to do? Long black hair draped over her face. A long dirtied white dress covered in stains to what looked like to be blood. Blood running down her face like tears. It freaked him out. One day when he was alone, he noticed the girl again. But this time she was close. It was as if she was approaching him. His body acted before his brain could process what was happening. His survival instincts kicking in, he started to run, but as he ran, the girl seemed to be getting closer, no matter where he ran or how fast he ran. She was getting closer and closer and closer, when suddenly a hand grabbed him. Screaming for help in these empty streets, Cody was dragged away through some kind of black mist. He, he opened his eyes, he found himself in a dark room full of chairs and desks. A blackboard on a wall with a desk in front. He was in some kind of classroom with a dark and spooky atmosphere. Not wanting to be there any longer, Cody pulled himself together. Looking around, he found that the blackboard had some kind of writing, and from where he stood, it looked like it was written in blood. Let's play a game, shall we? Believing he was being pranked, Cody tried to get out of this place as soon as possible. Walking into the dark hallway, his footsteps echoed throughout the halls. Cody tried navigating his way around in search for an exit, but as he explored this dark and dreary place, that girl appeared once again. Calling out, demanding to know who she was, the girl could only <laughs> giggle. And it was such a creepy giggle. This sent chills down his spine. His brain was screaming run, and that's what he did. He ran. He ran and ran and ran. But the giggles continued to echo throughout the halls, and it sounded like it was getting louder and louder, as if she was getting closer and closer. She scared to turn around to see how far she was. Cody ran into a room, using his body to keep the door closed. Fists hit on the other side, loud bangs echoing as roaring screeches were heard. It was as if this girl, if you could even call it that, was some kind of demonic creature. Soon the attempts to break through got sloppier, and the loud screeches and bangs soon died down. Echoing giggles returned with a, this game of tag is really fun, isn't it Cody? Chills ran down Cody's spine. 
As the giggles soon faded, fear paralysed him, sweat ran down his body and his breathing got heavier and heavier. Cody didn't know what to do. He didn't know what was happening. Who was this psycho? Just as she tried to calm himself down, a voice soon spoke up. Cody, what are you doing here? Looking up, he was surprised to find Amelia standing in front of him, a look of fear in her eyes as she hugged herself. Amelia. She was June's best friend since they were kids. Seeing her here confused him. From his point of view, Amelia despised him. Why wouldn't she? He was the one who bullied her best friend, and the one who was blamed for her death. She had every right to despise him. After a brief discussion, it turned out Amelia came the same way as Cody did. The demonic creature chased her and dragged her through a dark mist, saying, She misses you. I will return her to you. Not sure on what their next step should be, the two decided to try and figure out how to get out of this hell together. After all, what choice did they have? Hey all, Codex Angel here. Thanks for sticking around guys, it's greatly appreciated. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, maybe a comment, and possibly subscribe for more content. If you enjoyed this type of video, let me know and I'll consider doing another one. I've been thinking about doing more, but if you guys enjoy them, then I definitely will do more. Um, don't forget to check out my other social links, they're all in my description below. And as always, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching, see you around. Bye for now.